Hello and good evening. I'm Radzi Chinyanganya and I'm thrilled to be back to welcome you to BBC Radio 2's Young Choristers of the Year 2019. Since 1986, the BBC has been celebrating and showcasing the talent of young singers from churches, chapels and cathedrals around the UK and tonight is no different. Each of our eight choristers have made it through two gruelling rounds of judging to earn a place in tonight's festive final. We'll be meeting our finalists soon, two of whom will be awarded the title BBC Radio 2's Young Chorister of the Year 2019, and they'll join a list of choristers who've held the title spanning over 30 years. So to get us warmed up, here are last year's winners, Amelia Jakes and Cassian Pickler-Rocker with Philip Stopford's A Christmas Blessing. Thank you so much for that beautiful performance, reminding us all why you were crowned winners in 2018. Those were our Young Choristers of the Year for 2018, Amelia Jakes and Cassian Pickler-Rocker, all set to hand over the baton to this year's winners. And listening closely to their performances tonight with the unenviable task of selecting our winners are our judges. Our first judge made his debut at London's Royal Opera House in 1989 and is one of the leading singers and dramatic interpreters of his generation with award-winning performances and recordings both on CD and DVD with major labels. Performing at the world's major opera and concert venues, he started his singing career as a chorister in Ottawa and was a choral scholar at King's College, Cambridge. Please welcome Gerald Finlay. A warm welcome to a vocal coach to the stars, which include Take That, The Spice Girls and Gwyneth Paltrow to name but three. She's also a MOBO award winner to boot. Carrie Grant is regarded as one of the country's leading contemporary vocal coaches and was herself one of the country's leading session singers. Would you please welcome Carrie Grant. Our next judge has sung for the Queen and regularly sings the national anthem at large sporting events. Her accomplishments included an arena tour with Andrea Bocelli and a nomination for a Classical Brit Award for her first album. Please welcome Camilla Kerslake.
And finally, the chair of judges. He was also a choral scholar at King's College, Cambridge, and before that, a chorister. He was a member of the King's Singers for 12 years, a full-time composer since 1997. Our choristers will be very familiar with his compositions, and our winners will be singing one of his inspired Christmas carols later. Would you please welcome the legend, Bob Chilcott. So let's get started with the competition and introduce our first finalist, Charlie Truman. Charlie attends Queen Elizabeth Grammar School Wakefield and is a chorister at Wakefield Cathedral. Charlie will begin by singing Joy to the World, followed by Michael Head's The Little Road to Bethlehem. Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to our first performer tonight, Charlie Truman. Charlie, job done. How are you feeling? Relieved now it's all over. <laughs> well, you had the tough job of going first. How was that? 
Really nerve-wracking. I actually said to my mum this morning that, knowing my luck, I probably would go first. <laughs> and here I am. <laughs> You've got big ambitions. What is it you love most about music? I really love, like, the social aspect of things, so I've made so many friends through music. Well, it was a pleasure hearing you sing once more, Charlie Truman. <laughs> Gerald, if I come to yourself first, going first is no mean feat, and he did very well. Charlie, I thought you really did amazingly well to get your voice over, to deliver the story of the, of the carol was really lovely. Thank you very much. I didn't even, even, wasn't even looking at the music, so I followed your story very well. And it, I was very impressed that you were also looking at both your accompanists, because you allowed the music to you know, have its own breath and its own... Uh, rhythm, really, and you were really in control, so well done. Thank you, and what a way to start. Well, singing next is Kai Thomas. Kai is a music scholar at Edgeborough School in Farnham and sings in the choir at St Thomas on the Bourne. Kai is very proud of his Welsh heritage and will begin tonight by singing Sue O'Gan, arranged by Robert Priseman, followed by Adolf Adams, O Holy Night. Would you please welcome to the stage Kai Thomas. Thank you, Kai. Now, you and I have got something in common because we both live in England with proud roots elsewhere. You sung in Welsh. 
How was that and what made you decide to do it? I just love being Welsh and I just thought it would be a nice idea to sing in Welsh. Well, so did we. Now, let's talk about football. Where do you play and what position do you play? I play right wing and right back. We've won four out of five games and we're at the top of our league. Well, let's give his team and let's give Kai Thomas a massive round of applause. Well done, Kai. <laughs> Carrie, we just heard two languages there. How impressive is that to be able to sing in two languages? Well, Kai, I think you did Wales proud tonight with that. I think you should be very proud of yourself. Your voice is beautiful, gentle, feathery, embracing, warm, beautiful tones you're using throughout both pieces. At the end of the first song, the audience didn't dare clap. There was a pin drop moment. And you don't get those moments very often in music and singing, but there was a pin drop moment. So thank you so much for providing us with that. Thank you, Carrie. Well, singing next is William James. William attends King's College Junior School in Wimbledon and is head chorister at the Chapel Royal Hampton Court Palace. Now, William is not the only member of the James family in our competition tonight because we'll be hearing from his sister, Catherine, later on. So spare a thought for their parents in our audience, double the nerves. Well, William will begin by singing Charles Wood's Past Three O'Clock, followed by John Rutter's Dorme Yesu. Would you please welcome William James. And try 
William, that was fantastic. But you're also part of the National Children's Choir of Great Britain. Can you tell us about that? Um, so last summer we recorded a piece by Cecilia McDowell. It's about a refugee who came from Pakistan. You've also got a sister who's in this competition, Catherine. Now, what's the most annoying thing about Catherine? Um, I'm not sure. She's really a good sister. So you are clearly a wonderful young human being. Would you please give it up for William James? <laughs> Camilla, what did you make of that performance? I thought it was wonderful. I really, really enjoyed it, um, particularly the Rutter piece. I think it's very brave to take on pieces like that that are so well loved and so well known. Also, it was one of the most rhythmically challenging pieces we've had. There was some incidentals in there and you, you, know, you nailed them. Your pitch was fantastic throughout. Um, your phrasing was excellent. You've got a wonderful, wonderful line. I'm sure you hear that quite a lot. But uh, I think we all really, really enjoyed it. So congratulations. Singing next is William Miles Kingston. William is a music scholar at St. Peter's School in York and has been in the Minster Choir in York since 2014. Tonight, William is singing Gustav Holst's In the Bleak Midwinter, followed by the Sussex Carol, arranged by David Wilcox. Would you please welcome to the stage, William Miles Kingston. <laughs> William, I got the impression you really enjoyed that. Yeah, it was really, really fun. You've got another passion, which is running. Do you think singing helps running? Does running help singing? 
Um, I'm not sure. Maybe the breathing helps with running. So basically what we're saying is that if Mo Farah becomes a chorister, he could, he could make it. He could make it. William, thank you very much for that performance. Once more, would you please give it up for William Miles Kingston? <laughs> Bob, and as I said there, two classic pieces. How do you think he handled those? Well, I thought he did a brilliant job, actually, because they're very well known. They're the kind of pieces that almost feel traditional in nature, so everybody knows them. And to bring them off in the way that you did, I thought was remarkable. It was very musical and very secure vocally. I think you have to be very confident, actually, to sing that kind of material in that way. And I thought, William, you did that really admirably. And also, you had a real spark which really communicated, so thank you very much. And Bob, just as a general note about all the boys' performances, how do you assess them? We've seen four performances, but I think you'll agree, four fantastic performances. Yes, these young men showed a very, very assured and lovely way of singing. Congratulations to you all, because it was very, very impressive and very touching, so thank you. Thank you very much, Bob. Well, the boys, it's safe to say, have got us off to a fantastic start with their performances, but we're only halfway through the competition and there's still so much more to come. I'm Radzi and you're listening to the final of the BBC Radio 2's Young Chorister of the Year 2019. Let's get started with the second part of our competition and introduce our first female finalists. Amelia Horan is at Sedbra School in Cumbria where she sings in the chapel choir. Tonight, Amelia is singing Once in Royal David City followed by Benjamin Britten's That Younger Child. Would you please welcome to the stage, Amelia Horan. It's 
Amelia, that was beautiful. You've sung all over the world. Can you tell us about your trip to New York City? I think my favourite place to sing was St. Patrick's Cathedral. Wow. What pastime do you do, Amelia? Well, I like to fell run, which is very hard, and it's really enjoyable. Now, that wasn't the adjective I thought you'd go for. Amelia Horan, congratulations. Well done. <laughs> Gerald, two contrasting choices from Amelia there. What did you think of her performance? Yes, uh, Amelia, really the choice of music is really brave uh, to take the most iconic Christmas carol to begin your program once in Royal David City. I know there are many young choristers who dream perhaps of singing that uh, in the Christmas Eve service. So well done on that. And you know, it, it does show the tenacity you have to have as a singer to their long lines, those, those phrases, aren't they? And, uh, and you did really well to make sure your breath was getting right to the very end. So, so well done on that. Um, I love your voice. It's full. It's, uh, it's generous. The fell running is obviously doing you well in terms of your breath control. So well done on that. Thank you, Gerald. Well, up next is our second member of the James family to take to the stage this evening, following her brother's fantastic performance earlier. Catherine attends the Lady Eleanor Hollis School in Hampton, where she sings with the Hollis Singers. She's also in the choir of St. John the Baptist Church in Wimbledon. Catherine's going to sing the Coventry Carol and Benjamin Britten's Corpus Christi Carol. Would you please welcome to the stage, Catherine James.
Well done, Catherine. So we've established that you have a lovely voice, you are a lovely sister, according to your brother, but you also like being on the water. So I really enjoy some water sports. I love doing swimming, sailing and rowing. We do rowing at school on the River Thames and it's just such a wonderful experience to be in a boat and collaborate with some of my really good friends. Catherine James, well done. <laughs> Carrie, again, a traditional and a more modern piece. Yes, and making both sound so easy. And that's one of the big secrets of great singing is to make it look that easy when it's not that easy. I've got to talk a little bit about this second song. The start of that song was so difficult and delivered so beautifully. You have fabulous onset, the beginning of notes that is. Just beautiful line, the breathing is great, making it look really easy. I'm sure your swimming helps with that. But also, more than anything, you are a storyteller. You told us the story, you made great eye contact. Just beautiful to watch as well as listen to. Thank you, Carrie. Well, singing next is Lydia South. Lydia attends William Farr Church of England School near Lincoln. She's now in her seventh year as a Cope Girl at Lincoln Cathedral Choir, where she sings with her brother and father. Lydia will begin by singing Berlioz, The Shepherd's Farewell Carol, followed by Handel's How Beautiful Are the Feet. Let's welcome to the stage, Lydia South.
fantastic job, Lydia. You are so, so composed, but I suppose that partly comes from the fact you recently soloed at the Royal Festival Hall. How was that? That was a really amazing experience that happened because we went for an audition in London and then I got asked to be a child soloist in the performance of Judith, which was the first performance of it in a very long time. Well, understandably so, because your voice is absolutely beautiful. One more time, would you please give it up for Lydia South. <laughs> Camilla, two gorgeous Christmas pieces there. How did she handle those? Well, Lydia, my goodness, it was absolutely fantastic. Your voice is so consistent throughout the registers. I think I would love to hear you in sort of five, ten years. I think your chest voice is going to be really fantastic. I heard some excellent stuff down there. But at the same time, your top was just so clear and so strong. I thought your messa de voce was excellent. Um, and these are really difficult pieces that you chose and you executed them so, so well. It seemed effortless and haunting and stunning and I think you should be really proud of yourself. Well, the quality, I think it's safe to say, has been sky high. It's time now for our final chorister. Now, she's at the unenviable task of waiting until now for her turn to perform. Anna is a music scholar at St Paul's Girls' School in Hammersmith and is lead soprano at St Mary's Church in Barnes. Anna will begin by singing David Wilcox's arrangement of The First Noel, followed by Max Rager's The Virgin's Slumber Song. Ladies and gentlemen, the last of our eight finalists to perform, would you please give a very warm welcome to Anna Haystrap. Oh, peace. 
Anna, what a way to finish that was. It's been a long wait for you today, but it's been a long wait overall. Can you tell us about your journey to being here? Yeah, well, I apparently love this competition so much. This is my fourth time trying for it. Um, I was a reserve the first time and then didn't get through, and then I was a reserve last year. But I mean, every experience has been so fun. So yeah, I hope this time <laughs> is the time. <laughs> it was absolutely worth the wait. Anna Haystrap. Bob, what a beautiful piece to finish on. How did Anna handle that? Well, Anna, congratulations, because we all project a song in a different way because of our characters. But I think to sing the first Noel, you told the story, and, um, well, I thought the, the second piece was beautiful, very, very delicate and touching, and actually those high leads, absolutely beautiful, crystal clear, beautiful intonation. And uh, the story, again, was beautifully told. Very good singing. Well done. Well, now we've heard from all eight of our finalists tonight, and what a breadth of Christmas choral classics. Thank you to all of our singers who've taken part, and to our reserve choristers, Frederick Butler and Isabel Wilcox, who were on standby just in case somebody's voice wore out as the day went on. Now our judges have heard all of our choristers and now have the tricky task to decide who our winners will be. What an epic task they have on their hands. So all the very best of luck and a round of applause to Gerald Finley, Cary Grant, Camilla Kerslake and Bob Chilcott. Well, whilst our judges deliberate, we have something for you all to enjoy. This group of boys aged 7 to 16 have performed for popes and presidents alike and picked up three classical Brit nominations along the way with their unbelievable distinctive sound. The track we'll hear tonight is from their new Christmas album, It's Libra. Well, our judges have returned from their discussions, clutching the all-important golden envelope. So, Bob, would you like to join me so we can hear the results? So, the BBC Radio 2 Young Choristers of the Year are William Miles Kingston and Anna Haystrup. Anna, I'm going to start with yourself. Fourth time lucky. Yeah. And you've won it. How are you feeling? Um, yeah, I'm so thankful for the experience and to win is amazing. I guess it's a life lesson, always persevere. And um, thank you so much. Well, you're a well-deserving winner. And William, what about yourself, my friend? Because your performance was truly fantastic. I'm just amazed and overjoyed. And thank you very much. Well, I think it's safe to say we have two very worthy winners here. Would you please give it up for the BBC Radio 2's Young Choruses of the Year 2019, Anna and William. So let's congratulate all of our incredible finalists for getting this far and for all the hard work they've put in. I'm sure you'll agree with me, they have performed fantastically, have exciting times ahead of them. They've also got some trophies waiting for them. So let's give a round of applause as they collect those trophies to all of our finalists.
So without further ado, I think it's time we heard from our brand new BBC Radio 2 Young Choristers of the Year for 2019, singing together for the first time in what will be the first of many duets together. Composed by our head judge, Bob Chilcott, it's on Christmas night, oh little town. Let's welcome to the stage, Anna and William. Never have known that was their first time performing together. Fantastic. Our BBC Radio 2 Young Choristers of the Year for 2019. And what an exciting year you both have ahead. So all that's left for me to say is thank you to you, the audience. Thank you to our judges tonight, the fabulous Gerald Finley, Cary Grant, Camilla Kerslake and Bob Chilcott. Thank you to our pianist, Darius Batiwala, and organist, John Hosking. For me, Radzi, our organiser tonight, Emmy Hume, and producer, Alexa Good. Thank you very much for listening, and Merry Christmas.